Howdy, welcome to the channel. We are starting a four week adventure with the Ryobi chainsaw systems, including 18 volts and their 40 volt systems, talking about the pros and cons and some issues I've had with some of them. Now you will notice that most of these saws have a nice healthy patina to them. But it's just an ordinary crabby, oh my goodness. That is because these saws are actually used. Um, Cody over at Wrangle Star would, would not be too pleased with the condition that I have my saws in because uh, whenever I'm done with it, it's usually, you know, like 110 degrees out and I just put it back on the shelf. Now, whenever I do have a dull blade, I do not let that sit. I actually um, sharpen those consistently and regularly because I want to make sure that my saw is performing optimally. And big thanks to Todd over at Project Farm because he has actually done extensive testing on various sharpeners and I've actually uh, used the sharpener that he recommended, the, the handheld still sharpener. And uh, that's what I use to sharpen all of my tools with. First in our lineup, we have the Ryobi P546. Ryobi does not make this model anymore. This model is unavailable. You might be able to find it on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or someplace like that, even probably a pawn shop. Hey. Rick Harrison from Pawn Stars. All right, let's, let's see what you got. Um, best I could do is maybe $19. Do we have a deal? But you will not be able to purchase this even from their outlet store. This particular unit is part of the 18 volt ecosystem. This is a 10 inch bar, which means that you can cut up to an eight inch log with it. It will do 32 eight inch cuts on the four amp hour battery. And it weighs about 5.8 pounds, so almost six pounds with just the saw itself. Now this particular saw I've had for quite a while and we actually had an old oak tree that fell down at the front of our property. So I went out there and I started taking care of it. Well, I was about 30 minutes into using this saw whenever it decided to burn itself up. Now, I wasn't over pushing the saw. I wasn't stressing the saw. I was cutting the diameter that I was supposed to be cutting with it, but I literally burned up the motor that was in here. Now, I ordered and replaced the burned up motor with a new motor, but I am no longer cutting eight inch oak trees with this. I am now actually cutting much smaller items with this. This is more of a pruning saw. So if you have something that's a couple of inches in diameter, then this is going to work great for you. But if you're actually trying to fell trees with this, good luck. Uh, it's not what this saw is for. And that was my mistake. I shouldn't have done that. However, if it says that it will cut up to an eight inch log, I would expect it to be able to cut an eight inch log and do it consistently without burning the motor up. Now, one of the features on this that I do not prefer is you have to manually oil this chain. So as you're cutting, you have to push the rubber bulb here to push oil out of the system onto the chain. If you forget to do this, you're gonna burn up your chain very quickly, especially in hardwood. That chain's gonna go within no time. So it's very important that you do that and manual oilers are additional work that you have to do whenever you're trying to cut something. Now, you should always have full control of your saw, but there are weird times where you have the saw up over your head, and if you're in an awkward position, you can't always guarantee that you're gonna be able to hit that oiler. Now, one of the other issues that I have with the 18 volt saw is there is no onboard storage for the tool. So if you're needing to adjust the chain, which you should be checking your chain on a regular basis. You better check the chain before you wreck yourself then that means more than likely, you're gonna have to carry around this thing in your pocket. For that, I do not appreciate that Ryobi didn't create that. One of the features I do like about this Ryobi is that it actually has a chain guard that goes over your bar and chain. So that's actually really nice because that's gonna protect your truck or your garage, wherever you have this thing, or if you're just walking with it and you're not being careful with it and you're being careless, and the chain hits something, you're not going to gouge something out. It's gonna instead hit the plastic. This saw does not have a lock mechanism on it. Some of these guards, these chains guards that stop you from getting hurt in case there's a chain ejection, some of these actually have a lock on it to where if it's pushed forward, then it works. And if it pushed all the way back against your hand, then it stops working. Strike that. Reverse it. But this one doesn't have that feature. All right, so for the 18 volt chainsaw, we're going to open up the manual oiler using our pour spout on our bar oil. 
we're going to put a little bit of bar oil. I'm not going to fill this one up all the way because I'm not going to be using this one for much. Then we're going to put our cap back on. We'll go ahead and pull off our chain guard. And now we'll pop in our battery. And what we're going to do is we're going to chop up this small branch that we cut off. Okay, now, as you can tell, it did a pretty decent job on the cut, but you saw how slow it was. And it's not gonna be a fast cutter. This is an 18 volt brushed system. So all you're trying to do is make it easier than coming out here with like a uh, saber saw or circular saw trying to cut this wood up. As you can see, this actually did a really good job of cutting the wood. It's not gouged out or anything. It actually has a nice smooth cut on it. So the chain is sharp and it's doing its job. It's just not a very powerful saw. The other thing you need to look at whenever you have saws is you have anti-kickback devices that are on here. And this anti-kickback device is simply a piece of molded into the case plastic. So pushing this all the way forward actually doesn't stop anything from happening. This will actually kick back on you if you're not careful because of this not being metal and actually grabbing into the wood that you're cutting. That's why I say this is more of a pruning saw than it is any kind of felling or even big branch work. So now that we have seen the 18 volt saw in action, the question is, would I recommend purchasing this saw? My answer is a very easy no. I would not recommend buying this particular one. Now I know Ryobi has made improvements on these saws since I purchased this one, and I would definitely be intrigued to try the new one and to see if it's any better, especially the new brushless model. But for this particular one, this is a no-go for me. So I would not spend my money on this saw if I were you. So thanks for watching this video on the Ryobi Chainsaw ecosystem that I currently own. And if you have any questions about these specific saws, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. And please remember, these are for at-home use. This is not to take out and try to actually do massive work. If you're in the wood industry, you're not gonna want these saws. And I understand that, and I am not claiming that. But these work really good for home users or for small users who every now and then, or even small businesses who every now and then need to take care of some trees, these will actually work really good, these three, within that ecosystem. Again, I wouldn't recommend this one so much. If you have any questions or comments about any of the videos I've created or any of the tools behind me, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I love talking with you all and having great conversations, especially things like this. So keep the comments coming because I really enjoy it and I enjoy engaging with everybody in the chat. Thanks for watching.